Uh, no video for you guys for some time now, so I thought I'd just maybe include you on a job that I'm running today. Uh, for those who have been following along on the Mazak mission, not much has really changed on that. Uh, there's probably just some more so smaller jobs that I've been doing on it. Nothing sort of video worthy, I suppose, as of the last video. If I not find something that's sort of half decent worth showing, I'll definitely do another video on that. More so just organising parts and things like that just to get the last parts of it done. I can't say days or even weeks away from finishing, probably talking months away uh, with the amount of time I have to work on it, plus the fussy owner rebuilding it to the, you know, the scenario by now, how it's been going together. It's been a bit of a, a long process and that's not going to change anytime soon, but I'll eventually get that done anyway. It'll be a good machine once it's done. It'll be uh, a good machine to run this sort of job in, but I'm just going to run this job on the manual lathe. It's a three quarter, six TPI thread or six threads per inch for those not familiar. And just going to be a bit of an over over the shoulder type of view of what I'm doing in the video. There won't be so much of a information video on how to cut Acme threads. It's not really aimed at that. It's just as I say more of an over the shoulder view. So don't take it personal if I don't hand out any free information as far as feeds and speeds. I suppose you could say or depths of cut and things like that. It just you you can learn what you learn from watching over my shoulder. If you pick up something from the video, that's good. But it's just more of a day in the life type, type video. Um, the information I'll probably just share is just some basic stuff anyway I'll just talk about in the video just a bit of a walk in and um, I suppose introduction I suppose I could say into just getting started and just some of the, the things that the steps that I go through to get the job done rather than actually showing you the whole how I do it really but anyway it's enough of the talking now so uh, I'll just get you set up on the manual lathe and we'll be able to run through the job. Uh, as you can probably see, there's a bit of a heat signature there, so these parts do get heat treated. They weren't heat treated prior, but um, as with any serviceable part, they do wear out. And I do put a grease nipple on the actual nut itself, which I do make as well. But unfortunately, the, the end user doesn't grease them, so they were wearing out. So we've had to introduce heat treatment into the part now to be able to solve some of that uh, wearing problem. They, they're about 45 Rockwell where they are now, and Rockwell C, um, the hardness of them now. So it, it, they do um, wear a little bit longer now for those people who don't know, don't like to look after things and like to complain when they wear out. So hopefully that'll. Um, Get the the uh, part I suppose not a good way to say it, but maybe past the warranty period is all my is all my customers after uh, he puts a one year uh, warranty on anything that he makes and sells so these go into a larger part so he's, he's happy to get it passed out the guys aren't looking after him that's not his problem so as you could say you know put oil in your engine in it, and if it blows up that's your problem and that's the same scenario here so what we've done is with the custom we've um, I've introduced the heat treatment as I say which is an added cost the customer didn't want to know about, but unfortunately it's the only way to solve the problem if people don't want to maintain stuff, but another story for another day. Uh, just take you up and just show you a bit of a sample of the parts that I'm doing. So I've done these in a large, fairly large volume, about 60 of them at a time, which is a lot for a manual lathe, but we went through them pretty fast, as you'll probably see when you had, as we get into the video. Definitely a good job from the Mazak. And I've just set, up, I'll, I'll set you up over there so you can watch me running through that job for those who are interested. But um, I'll try and, as I say, try to include a little bit of info in there, but it won't be a, a bit of, it's not, a, as I say, a how-to cut threads on there, but you'll be able to pick up a little bit of stuff by just watching your video, surprising what you can learn by just watching watching your video anyway. So I'll get you set up over there and we'll get going with it. As you can probably see, the video is not totally focusing. It's got picking up on too many things around. It seems to be picking up on the swarf in the background rather than the part itself. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll get you set up at the end of the lathe, but just to bring you in. So we've got the raw part, obviously. got that reduced section at the end there. Not that there's any bearing on this. We'll just go along and cut the thread along here. We, we hold it pretty short in the actual um, the chuck itself. It's more so just to stop this to deflecting. Uh, the bar is three-quarter, as you probably know already. And I just put a bit of a step cut in there or a bit of a landing in there, which I parked the tool in, which will make, make a bit more sense. I'll zoom you in nice and close so you'll be able to see plenty of it anyway. So we just cut along, disengage the half nut, and then uh, pull out, re-engage it, and then drive out. Because this is a metric machine, for those who are not familiar, um, opposite threads on opposite machines normally have to keep the half nut engaged. Uh, in my case, I've got a metric machine, can the imperial thread, so I need to drive out, drive the actual carriage weight back out, which you'll see in the video anyway. And as we get going, I'll just paste the actual surface with um, just some 
um, cutting oil it's undiluted cutting oil if you're sort of wondering why i'm putting on in between cuts but i'll just get you sitting up in a nice spot and you guys can watch or not watch as you want you might learn something possibly so I got you up in the best position I can find for you anyway. It looks funny where it is, but it's sort of the things you have to do to do, to do videos sometimes funny. Um, there won't be too much talking in the video, so you'd be grateful for that. Um, as I say, just go along patient with the oil, cutting oil on the way, and we just whip through the cuts, and I'll just, I'll just explain some basic information if I think of anything along the way that I haven't really included so far, but it'll be pretty straightforward. I'll just do cut, 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 and these guys can just watch, as I say, watch or not watch. So I'll just get the machine set up into a rough position, and then we'll get going with it. I have no idea if you can hear me or not, but um, it'll take a little bit just to get it started. We'll just wait for the thread chase here. Um, indicated to come around to us position so I can just hit, hit the half under position and once we get going there we're right to go so I'll just get that started and then we'll get going with it But the only thing that slows me down is just waiting for the truck to stop. I always wait for it to come to a pretty good stop and then hit it into reverse and I just throw it over while it's slowing down. So just that little bit of a pause in between if you're wondering why it's taking maybe a little bit longer than maybe you might do it. Possibly, I don't know, but it seems fairly quick to me. Just the last cut for the size and cut, then we do a couple of spring passes. Just one more to finish, I always do two spring passes. <laughs>
It's just to get that thread running nice anyway. And that's pretty much it. Just give it a blow off with the compressed air, just to knock off the debris, and also just to clean the insert and the swarf on there. Just loosen that off, just bring it up to you. It's not totally finished yet. I just need to dress the top of the thread as well, just to bring it into size. I can use full form thread uh, threading inserts, but I choose not to because I like to run a little bit deeper just for this application. So that actually it is overcut. So we've got a bit more thread engagement. So let's try and get that into the camera if I can. So as you can see, so it's not too bad. So it still needs to be just some finishing work to do to do on it, I should say. You should get that right. So it's not too bad. That's so that's your uh, three quarter six TPI thread cutting. So that'll probably do for this video. Even though I was thinking it was going to be a short video, it still took eleven minutes. But otherwise, that'll do for this video. I'm looking forward to possibly coming back with uh, another video. I might. But look at doing while I'm on the manual lathe. I did post a video previously about, <clears throat> excuse me, leveling a lathe that I didn't feel I did a good job. So I will be coming back in another video shortly and revisiting that video because I wasn't happy about some things in there. It wasn't really enough information that I found. So I did delete that one from my channel because I wasn't totally happy with that one. For those who have watched, you will get that video again. Just give me a bit of a heads up that that video will be coming back again. Uh, so for those who have already watched it, you can watch it or not watch it up to you. But I just want to include a bit of information that was missing from that video. But otherwise, that will do for this video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Okay, bye for now.